Sorry guys, it's been a while. I'll try to get better at putting videos out on time. This video is just an insight of stuff I did before episode 1. I lost a lot of pictures when my last phone died. Pictures I do have are what I was able to salvage of my PC and cloud saves. Enjoy. Once I got the boat home, the first thing I did was remove all of the loose equipment and debris. I got three small anchors and some chain with the deal, so that was a plus. The console was bolted down and there wasn't any controls besides the helm and steering wheel. I then gave it a good wash and a scrub to get a good idea of the condition of the gel coat and paint. The floor had a lot of screw holes so it needed to change, but I noticed before I bought the boat, being a COVID project and all, after letting the boat dry in this hot beaming sun, I got out the grind and began cutting away the top layer of fiberglass on the floor. Peeled that away and did the same to the plywood underneath. That's what you can see in this picture here. After the floor was ripped up, from the get go I knew I wanted to put in some type of conduit to get the rigging off of the main deck. I chipped out a channel in the floor with a claw hammer and laid a roughly 4 foot long piece of PVC pipe into it. With the foam dug out, I was able to get in with my drill using a 3 inch hole saw to drill a hole or cut a hole into the bilge wall to give myself access to the conduit. I wasn't able to find pictures of it but I filled in the gap underneath the conduit and the spaces on the side of it with 6 pound flotation foam. The foam I used was from Toolboat. The entire conduit was then covered with the foam. There were small blocks of wood placed in each corner of the deck, I'm guessing for mountain purposes. They were all replaced with starboard just so they wouldn't rot again. The next step was to cut new wood for the deck out of a sheet of half inch marine plywood. The deck ended up being two pieces instead of one. The bow portion of the deck needed a three inch hole to allow the conduit to protrude. Both pieces of the deck meat on a firm factory stringer just to give it more strength in that joint. One side of each of the decks was fiberglass with ounce and a half chop strand matting just for waterproofing that would end up being the bottom half of the deck. The conduit, foam and starboard backers were all level to allow the deck to sit flat with the one inch lift of the old deck that I left around the perimeter of the new deck. The one inch lip of the old deck was ground back to a taper, removing all of the paint and gel coat just to allow good adhesion of new fiberglass over the new deck. Once the new deck was laid in place and leveled, a batch of thickened polyester resin was poured between the new deck and the one inch lip to bridge any gaps and just to allow strength in that area for when I'm putting down the new fiberglass. Including the one inch lip I left to the edge of the new deck, I then ground back two inches up the gunnel or the side of each side of the deck, completely around the new deck to allow fiberglass to go up the sides by two or three inches just to give a good hole and have solid strength of keeping that deck in place. With the new deck in place, I then mixed up a batch of thin, unthickened, laminating polyester resin just to roll on the, on the deck so it won't soak up all of the resin from the new fiberglass I'm about to lay. The first layer of new fiberglass laid on the deck was ounce and a half chop strand matting for waterproofing and to allow good adhesion of the 1708 by axle I'm about to put down. The fiberglass on the deck was laid in three separate sections to give me more working time being new to fiberglass and just allow me time to focus on that part of the deck instead of rushing to a new part without fully wetting out fiberglass or using my fin ruler to get rid of all the access resin. Each new piece of fiberglass 
edged lapped over the existing piece of fiberglass so they will have at least two to three inches overlapping to allow that those two layers to bond mechanically and chemically before laying the new fiberglass i measured the thickness of the old fiberglass that came off the old deck and it wasn't that thick and it looked like they just used chop strand matting so the biaxial and the chop strand matting that i used on this deck was thicker and it should be much stronger by using the biaxial fiberglass fiberglass was laid using laminating resin polyester resin the last layer was laid using just polyester resin with wax to allow it to dry i gave each layer of fiberglass some time to set up become tacky and cool down before laying a new layer of fiberglass at this point it's probably about one or two days that the boat was actually left the cure i wasn't able to get back to it um, when i did get back to it the next step was to remove any overhang or access fiberglass around the edges all of the seams from the chop strand matting and the 1708 biaxial was fed back just to give an even surface for when it comes time to put down non-skid or gel coat or paint. With the new deck in, it was time to tackle all of the screw holes in the stern, the gunnel and the bow. I ground down each of the screw or bolt holes to 12 to 1 taper. I then widen all of the holes with a bigger drill bit just to clean the inside surface. I vacuum each hole out and wipe the surface down with acetone. Then I mixed up a batch of thickened polyester resin and filled every hole. With most of the screw holes patched in the hull, the boat was pretty much 85 to 95% waterproof. At this point, I took about two months off. I went away, came back, and decided it was time to start with the console, the center console. I wish I had more pictures of this process that I was doing in this picture. Um, what I did was cut all of the holes to have an even surface if it was a square. I cut all of the angles at 90 degree if it was a circle. I cut out all of the circles. Um, what I then did was cut out cardboard inserts into those holes and I glued them to a cardboard backer and inserted them into the hole. Then I came from the inside and fiberglass over those inserts. Those inserts were covered with wax paper so the fiberglass wouldn't stick to them. And what this did was gave me a a backer for when I'm fiberglassing and filling the holes from the exterior of the console. This picture gives you um, an idea of how the console looked after I took off, off those um, cardboard backers. At this point, I already filled them with chop strand matting, but you can see that from the back, I already had a, a fiberglass backer to I had new fiberglass in the front of the console or the exterior of the console too without having to fiberglass or bridge a hole. Before any work was done to the console, all of the rotten wood um, that the steering wheel and the shifter, the compass, the CD player would mount to that was on the interior of the console was removed. So now it was time to replace that wood. The gel coat and fiberglass in those areas were removed and uh, ground back just so the surface would be etched to accept this new fiberglass. I don't have much pictures of this, but what I was doing here in this picture was laying um, a layer of chop strand matting just to stabilize the surface, um, to thicken those weak spots from holes or cracks. And the next step would be to put in new marine plywood over this chop strand matting. The polyester resin I used on the chop strand was laminating resin, so it wouldn't cure all the way. It would just tack up. Once that was cured to the point where it's tacky, I put in new 
marine plywood and cover that with a layer of sharp strand matting and bioxyl. Once that was cured, the next step was to start fairing the exterior of the console. Um, I also wasn't able to recover much pictures of this, um, but here you go. This is with all the screw holes filled in, the same process I used on the hull and the first layer of polyester fairing. I used tool boat for all my fiberglassing and my fairing compound at this point. For the first time doing a fairing, it came out pretty okay, if I do say so myself. I used the console as a test piece before I do the hull and those many screw holes. Um, so we'll see how it goes going forward. I'll end this video here for now and probably pick up the rest in another video. I'll see you guys shortly. But before you go, here's some actual moving pictures for the persons who made it this far in the video. Thank you.